Hi, this is Romy, author of The Key, a social emotional toolkit for teens. Today's video is The Key Unlocked, where I'll go through all the different topics that are actually in the key so you can get an idea of what to expect when you go through this book. Okay, so it's divided into three main sections. We start with my friendships, me, my family. The reason that we start with my friendships is because we're talking with teenagers and adolescents where at that age, friendships is the most important thing that's going on in their lives. So it's a great way to, to make sense of what's going on by using friendships. So today I'm just going to quickly go through the index pretty much. So we're going to go through the index and just quickly explain what's in the book. So starting with my friendships, we start with what kind of friend are you? Often we blame other people for what's going on within our friendship circles, whether we're teenagers or adults. So it's actually looking at what's my role in the friendships and what, what am I doing? Uh, we look at topics such as jealousy and envy and try and understand what jealousy and envy actually are. How can we handle it better and how can we actually work toward not feeling jealous or envious? Uh, then we, we move into the section on bullies. Obviously bullying is being taught in schools in a number of different formats. I look at bullies, the role of the bully, uh, what's happening to the person that is being bullied, things that we can do about it for ourselves, and also a bully check-in, which is actually understanding that fine line between teasing and bullying. It's a very fine line and sometimes we cross it without realising. So just sort of getting a grip on understanding what's going on in bullying. Next we talk about apologies and compliments. So apologies, uh, again, teenagers or adults, we find it very hard to give an apology and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we kind of feel like it's the end of the world and there's no way back. So learning how to give a simple apology when and if it's necessary can actually save us a world of pain. So as you can see so far, there is always something that we can do. There's never a dead end that we can't do anything for ourselves. Next, we look at values. So not just rattling off a list of values, but actually what are they? Why are they important to me? What does that mean? What can I do with them? Am I meant to do something with them? How does it work? Understanding what you value in life, whether you're young, a young teenager, an older teenager, an adult, is really, really important in how do we make decisions? What's going on for ourselves? Understanding what we value is a really good first step. Um, from values, we go into empathy, clearly another really big topic. I look at empathy, I suppose, from two different ways. We look at empathy in the smaller sense and in the larger sense. So empathy within my family and friends, within my immediate world, everything that is right around me, and then empathy in the world, the larger world, people we don't know, people on the other side of the world, looking at the news. So looking at empathy on a small scale and a large scale so that we're actually participating members of society. So that's pretty much all the topics under my friendship. As you can see clearly, those topics are really about us, but also used under the, the guise of friendship so that it makes sense in relating to other people. Okay, then we move into the section of me, which is all about me, yay. <laughs> um, so, section of me, we start with tone of voice. Okay, tone of voice is a huge topic. I don't know if how many people recognize what tone of voice we use when we talk to other people. We all recognize what tone of voice other people use when they talk to us, but do we stop and know what we're doing? Okay, so now we're coming into self-awareness practice, self-inquiry practice. At adolescence, it's a brilliant age to be starting to learn how to do those practices so that we can become aware of what we're doing tone of voice can make and break any situation. In fact, I, in fact, I teach it as a full course to adults here where I live. Then we move into choices. Again, another big topic. Maybe I should just say, say straight out. All the topics for me are very big. Uh, the topic of choices. What choices are we making? Are they good choices? Are they bad choices? Are we recognizing that we're making choices? We often think that kind of life just happens to us, it's happening around us, but we sometimes forget to get back in charge. Every single thing that we do, think, feel is a choice and we can change that choice, we can change that decision, but we need to start recognizing when we're making choices so that we are making choices that are good for us, okay? And good for us, what does that mean? Good for me, good for my family, good for society, good for culture. Who am I? So we get into all of these other topics when we start looking at how do we make a choice? How do we make a decision? We go into breath work, breathing. 
how do we breathe? How do we calm down? I know that we think that we're breathing all day long and obviously we are, but are we taking a good deep breath that is going past this, kind of the anxiety short breath, going past the chest, past the diaphragm into the belly? Are we taking a belly breath? How do we get to that place? It can be really difficult at first. And um, so we talk about breathing. Why do we need to take a deep breath? It helps with depression, anxiety, sadness, arguments, calming down, preparing for an exam. Breathing helps with a whole lot of things to help get us back into the present moment and to calm down. So there are three short videos, which means you can watch the video and actually learn and and see how it's done and then do it together with me so they're literally me sitting there going okay you and me are going to do this together so we do do the breathing together and we learn the techniques so once we've learned our breathing and we've calmed down it's a great time to talk about anxiety so again with anxiety there is a video attached because it can be a tricky topic um, so with the anxiety section there's some text around it there's a recap section to make sure that you truly understand what's going on and there's a video so the video is me explaining what anxiety is. So what is it? Where in our body do we feel it? What are things that we can do for ourselves? Again, there is always something that we can do. And how can we address anxiety and stop it from sort of taking over our life and again, get back in control? Next, we talk about success and failure. So success and failure really need to be redefined. We are constantly setting ourselves up for failure. How many times have you heard a teenager or have you yourself walked into a test and gone, oh my God, I'm gonna fail. Okay, so we're walking in setting ourselves up for failure. Okay, if you're gonna walk in there and fail, what does it mean? Is failing 49% and under the 50? Is failing 0%? Is failing 90%? Who are you comparing yourself to? Who decides what failure is? Is it you? Is it your parents? Is it your older brother or sister that always gets this particular mark and you get this particular mark? What are your friends getting? So understanding what you consider success and failure will help you know where you're at. Okay, so we need to redefine what we think these words mean for ourselves. Because again, for everybody, it's completely different. And then we move into unconditional love, negative thoughts, and creating positive affirmations. So we talk about unconditional love as in understanding what that means and to love without condition, to be loved without condition, and self-love. How can we love ourselves without condition? How can we be our best friend? How can we trust ourselves completely? That is an amazing place to get to and the younger we learn that, the better off we are. Okay, it's mixed in with negative thoughts and positive thoughts. It's really important to understand negative thoughts, okay? It's, under, it's important to understand where do they come from? How do they get stuck in this loop in our head? Why do we think that they're true? What's going on? So again, there are a few videos in this section on understanding negative thoughts, understanding where they come from, how they get stuck, and how we can get rid of them. There's a step-by-step -step process on how to go from negative thoughts to positive thoughts. So again, a really, really important section and really important to learn when we're young. And the last part of this section, we talk about sadness, happiness, and depression. Really important to understand the sliding scale that these all live on and understand what that means for us, okay? We don't wanna live in happiness all the time and just be kind of exhilarated all the time. It's an unrealistic thing. We wanna live in balance, in balance of all of our emotions, including sadness, and understanding where sadness becomes depression, where's that sliding scale going, and what can we do about it? And at what point do we need help? which reminds me there's a video on why trying to find a counsellor is like shopping for shoes. Okay, so it's all about how do we seek help? If we're at a point where we do need help, how do we actually get the right kind of help that we need? It's very important that we're getting the right kind of help, not just any kind of help. Ah, so that's the section on me. Then we go into the last section, which is the shortest section, and it's on my family. The first thing we do with my family is look at extending our family beyond our blood relatives. It is very important that when we are young, we have a very large support network. So we want to look at who else can we consider a family. So if we need help or need someone to talk to, there are a number of people in our world that we consider family, that we trust and that we can talk to. And we look at our home, what's going on in the home, and we look at divorce. In today's society, unfortunately, we do need to look at divorce and it actually does need to be taught because we need to know what's going on in the household and as a teenager, as an adolescent, it is important that we understand 
what's going on with our parents. So whether that's happening for you or not, it'll be happening for someone that you know. We all need to know what is going on and we need to be really, really certain and reassured that it is never ever our fault no matter what the situation is. So that's the, the final topic is my family. So we have my friendship, me and my family. So all of the topics come under all of those three main headings. For me, I feel like if I could write the book as kind of a spiral, that's what I would have done. If you look at the things like say values, what do we value? From there, what choices do we make? Are they good or bad? How do we feel about the choices that we've made? What choices do we make because we're feeling that way? How does that affect our values? How does that then affect the choices that we make, the way we feel, how we use our tone of voice, what choices we make? Can you see how everything kind of goes in spirals? And I think if we made this sort of book like that, that's exactly what I would love to have done. But unfortunately, it is an up and down index. So that is the key unlocked. They are all the topics that are in this book. It can be read by teenagers themselves at home and just gone through in whatever order that you like. It can be done with parents and teenagers together. It also can be taught in schools. So even though I'm going through the topics in order as I see them in the book, it doesn't actually have to be taught that way. So can, if you are a teacher and you're in the classroom, you can teach it as a course beginning to end and that's perfectly fine. I often do that in Australia. But then even whilst I'm there, I might be wanting to teach one topic and then I realise the students are looking stressed, they've got a test next week and I just flip it around and go, okay, let's do some breathing today and let's learn how to calm down. Maybe we need to look at anxiety, maybe we need to look at positive affirmations or success and failure. So whatever topic is going on, whatever subject is happening at that time, then it's a great idea to actually just go straight to that subject and address that so that it's relevant to, to your student's life. So if you're a teacher, you can teach it in any which way you like, whether it's as, as one-off workshops, as a course in order, or as a course out of order. Um, if you're a parent, you can teach it however you like and go through it in whatever order you like with your teenager. Or if you're a teenager, just pick it up and maybe you want to start with a topic that resonates with you the most, or you can go through it sort of beginning to end. Like I said, it's in a kind of spiral of each topic bounces off each other, so it doesn't have to be taught in a particular order. It can be taught however you choose. So that is the key unlocked. Hopefully that makes a whole lot of sense. If you do have any questions, please just hit me up. Um, you can jump on my website, romigrossberg.com, and the book is in there. This is the book, the key. So please uh, get in touch if you have any questions, and I would love to hear from you.